Ivy a little. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my January wrap up for 2022. I read a total of 15 books this month so I will be splitting this up into three different parts. So these are the first five books that I'm going to talk about for this month and without further ado let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is Bones of Ruin by Sarah Rowley and this I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Iris who is an African tightrope walker who is hiding the ability that she cannot die. One day her ability is discovered. She's approached by the mysterious Adam Temple who is a member of the Enlightenment Committee. He seems to know a lot about her, especially her past that she can't remember and she is desperate to learn more. So he proposes that she become his champion in the Deadly Tournament of Freaks, featuring teams of individuals with fantastical abilities in exchange for the secrets that she wants to know. She reluctantly agrees, but the more she begins to remember, the harder it is to tell who the enemy is, and it's like the story of that. I really liked this story. I found it to be so addictive, and I just wanted to know more about these characters. I thought that they were all so unique and their abilities were so interesting to learn more about. And I just found that the slow unraveling of the mystery was so well done. The Fool, Jack, and Graham were probably three of the most creepy characters I have ever read about. Like I would just not want to ever be in a room anywhere near those three. I think that Iris was a very strong main character and I was so invested in learning more about her past and who she is. I was definitely more invested in Iris's story rather than the love square that she found herself in, although I did enjoy the banter that she had with her three suitors. I just didn't really feel the romantic chemistry between any of them except for one, but it made sense for them to have chemistry. Like, I don't want to spoil you know, who it is, but it just made sense. The other two, it was like, mm, I don't get it. There isn't much of a wrap up to the story. You're definitely left with a lot of questions, but I am really intrigued in where the story is going to go and what's going to happen next. So I will definitely be picking up the next book in the trilogy. But yeah, I give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed it. The next book I have is Titan's Curse. This is the third book in the Percy Jackson series. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. I think that this series in general is just so good at cliffhangers and making you want to immediately pick up the next book in the series. This installment introduced introduces you to a lot of new characters. I loved the addition of Artemis and her headhunter Zoe as well as Apollo. Zoe was kind of a bitch, I'm not gonna lie, and I hated her, but I also loved her at the same time. It was a very conflicting thing in my mind. I really loved the inclusion of the Pegasi in this. Blackjack is quickly becoming one of my favorite characters and I really hope we get more of him in the next installment. I will say that I was a little bit disappointed that Annabeth was not a big part of this book because she gets kidnapped so like Obviously, she's not going to be there for the majority of it, but she's one of my favorite characters, so I just wish there was more of her. And Thalia is a shitty person. I did not like her character at all. The way that she treated people was just not for me. Like, I was just like, you're a brat. Stop it. So I didn't like any scene that she was in. I do think that at this point, three books in, the books are becoming rather repetitive, which kind of sucks, but I mean, I'm going to continue and finish the series just because I want to see how it ends. But yeah, I give it a four out of five stars. It's a good time. The next book I have is You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen McManus. I give this a 3.5 out of five stars. After High Strong Ivy loses the student council to somebody who ran as a joke, she is utterly humiliated and does not want to return to school the next day for her competitor's victory speech. In the parking lot the next day, she runs into her childhood friends Cal and Mateo who agree that a day in Boston sounds like a lot of fun and that they will all skip school together. As they're walking down the street, they see another student from their school who is also skipping that day, and so they decide that they are going to follow him and see what he's up to. They quickly realize that this may not have been their best idea when they stumble into a murder crime scene. All three are somehow connected to the murdered victim and their secrets are going to come out one way or another. This is told over the span of one day, which I usually do not like in mystery books, but it just worked for this book. 
It was a lot of fun trying to solve this murder with these three characters. I also really enjoyed the alternating point of view between the three of them. It was interesting to learn more about their backstory, how they became friends, and then ultimately stopped being friends. I like how they all had their own issues that they were trying to deal with alongside this murder mystery. It was nice to not have a sole focus on that murder. I do think that the pacing was a little bit slow and it took a while to get into the story but once that pacing picked up it was hard to put down. I was able to call the killer pretty early on in the story which was a bit disappointing but overall it was a very fun read but I don't think I'm ever going to revisit it so I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have was one that I gave 5 stars. It is Edgewood by Kristen Cicerelli. I think that Kristen Cicerelli is one of my favorite authors. I just find her writing style to be so enjoyable. This one follows 19-year-old Emmeline Lark, who wants nothing more than to be a singer. On the verge of making it big, she decides that she is going to focus fully on her singing career, so she moves from her hometown of Edgewood to Montreal. While there, she receives a phone call informing her that her grandfather, who has Alzheimer's, has gone missing from his assisted living home. All that was left in his room is a mysterious orb that means that he was tithed to the Wood King. Emmeline immediately puts everything on hold Hold to return to Edgewoods to save her family. While in the woods, Emmeline learns of the curse that is plaguing the woods and the people within it, and it's like the story of that, but I freaking loved this book so much. Like I said, I was initially drawn to this book solely because of Kristen Cicerelli, but also this cover is just gorgeous. Like, th does this not make you want to read the book? It definitely did for me. I loved how music and memory is interwoven so well into this story, and I think that the forest setting was just so atmospheric and interesting to read about. I also thought that it was a nice touch to have some parts set in Montreal as well. So we got the fantastical forest vibes, but then we also got a more modern Montreal, so it was a nice balance of the two. I do think that a lot of the story was predictable, but there were some twists and turns that I didn't see coming, so I did feel like it balanced out in the end. I'm also a big fan of dragons, and I had no idea that there was a dragon in this book, so it was a pleasant surprise and probably one of my favorite chapters in the book. I did enjoy Emmeline as a main character for the most part, but at times she was very frustrating and she drove me up the wall. I really loved her relationship with her grandfather, and I can definitely relate to her story in that aspect because my grandma also has Alzheimer's, so I can definitely relate to that grief that you feel when somebody you love doesn't remember who you are anymore. I did really love her character development and how much her outlook on life changed as the story progressed. I liked the enemies to lovers romance in this for the most part. Some of the things that the love interest did were uh, pretty questionable, which I'm not going to spoil, but if you read it, you probably know what I'm talking about. Like, it was like, <laughs> I like the backstory of their romance as well, but again, the things that he does is a little bit of a dick move, my friend, but again, spoilers. I'm also a fan that the romance was a very back burner romance, like it wasn't the sole focus of this book at all, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I also really liked the side characters in this. Rook, Sable, and Grace were all great additions to the story, and I really like how their characters fit into everything at the end. I actually listened to this on audiobook, and I do think that the narrator did an incredible job with these characters and the overall vibe of this story. So overall, I highly recommend this, especially because it is a standalone, so you get a nice ending that wraps up very, very well. So yeah, five out of five stars. I really, really like this one. And then the final book that I will talk about for this part of the wrap-up is The Replacement Wife by Darby Kane. I give this a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows Elisa Wright, who is convinced that her brother-in-law Josh is a murderer after the death of one wife and his new fiance suddenly going missing without a trace. Josh announces that he is seeing someone new and Elise is shocked that he is able to jump into another relationship so soon. Fearing for the new girlfriend's life, Elisa launches her own investigation to find out what actually happened to her friend and if Josh is behind her disappearance. There is just something about an unreliable narrator that gets me every time. It doesn't matter what the reason they're unreliable is. I am hooked every time. I just love not knowing whether or not I can trust the events that they're recalling or if they're actually telling the truth. It just makes for such a fun book, in my opinion. There is just so much gaslighting and manipulation and just second guessing of Elisa in this, and I love how she slowly 
recalls her backstory and what happened to her. I think that it was a great way to build that tension and suspense in this book. I think it was very interesting to see how she was dealing with what happened to her and how that was affecting her relationship and her mind as the story progressed. I hated Harris, who is Elisa's husband. He always took Josh's side no matter what the situation was and it drove me crazy that he wouldn't even listen to Elisa when she was coming to him with her concerns. Like he was just like, nope, Josh is an angel, you're crazy. Bye. And it drove me crazy. He made me so angry. The book definitely does become repetitive after a while, but I mean, it was still a really fun time and it did wrap up very nicely. So I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was fun while it lasted. All right, everybody. So those were the first five books that I read for the month of January 2022. Like I said, this is going to be split up into three parts. So this is part one. I will leave the other parts down below once they're uploaded so you guys can check out the other 10 books that I read. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye. Yeah.